He's the lead NFL draft writer for NFL.com. It's Eric Edholm. What's up, Eric? Good morning. What's going on? Uh, we were talking a little NFL draft earlier on the show, and you know everybody's got their ratings, and you never really know how the drafts are going to work out until a few years in. What do you think of the Commanders draft, and what do you think that does for them as a team overall? Yeah, overall, I really liked it. I mean, obviously, you know, you could debate whether Jane Daniels is, is going to be the best quarterback long term or not. I mean, I I had a slightly higher grade on Drake May, but I think Jane Daniels is going to be better earlier. I think he's you know he's had a little more experience. He's a you know a little more electric runner, um, and I think he's going to be a a big fit for that team. I I really love what they did there, especially their next three picks. I mean, I thought. You know, day two in general was a was a huge hit for them. Uh, you know, Johnny Newton. You know, are, you want to argue positional value and all that, fine. But I mean, I just feel like he was a first round talent in a very thin position this year, so that was a great pickup. Mike Stainer still, I know a lot of teams really liked him to get him in. You know, right at the 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 very end of the top fifty, I thought was a coup. Uh, ben Sinnott is one of my favorite tight ends in this class. I think he's really going to outplay his. Uh, his reputation, at least, you know, and I and I had him in the um, right around there in my top hundred rankings. And I had some people say, oh, I don't know about this guy, and I I'm willing to bet on him. So I like him a lot. I think he's going to end up being a a quality receiver for the team. And yeah, I mean, look, I don't know if Brandon Coleman's going to play guard or tackle for them. Probably guard, but I don't think they needed to cross off every single need like you know to me getting a not getting a a tackle at the top of the draft isn't a deal breaker for me really like the the overall class Dominic Hampton is a, is a really intriguing guy on day three too so I just felt like it was a continuation of what Scott Peters has done at this point of the offseason which is make smart targeted additions at um yeah some key positions but also kind of add to the professionalism and, and leadership in the building too they got a lot of guys with high you know uh intangibles and good character and things like that so i really can't complain at all hey, eric and i love too. you mentioned the the johnny newton pick i i would much rather he pick his higher ranked defensive tackle even though they have Payne and allen instead of like who he has ranked as his fifth or sixth best offensive tackle at that point right like right. plug in the the talent you know, you can always upgrade offensive line in year two of the draft if you didn't hit on Coleman or in any of the, you know, free agency signings. So I, I love that approach by Peters. Yeah, I just think, you know, I mean, I think we get a little too hung up on needs. Yeah, you don't want Jaden Deals getting killed, right? I mean, we all agree on that. But, right. um, and you can do some things schematically that help him out, you know, build in a screen game and, you know, look for, for some veteran help there and stuff. I'm with you. I, I especially for a team at this phase like if you you know if you're close to a super bowl or you know you're kind of in that proverbial you know one player away kind of mode i i suppose i understand going for it and, and taking the need position over the higher ranked player that sort of thing but those are very few situations that exist and, and washington's not in it and i think i think it was absolutely smart um, again, I just I would give them like a very solid B plus grade for what they've done this off season, all told. And um, is every box checked? No, but they're a lot more checked than I thought could be uh, entering this off season. Talking to Eric at home, lead NFL draft writer for NFL dot com. So yesterday we were kind of talking amongst ourselves about how six quarterbacks got drafted in the first twelve picks, and just playing the odds. Two or three of them are likely to bust, right? It's just by the numbers. And we were wondering who we thought was most likely to bust. How about you give us who you think would be most likely to bust? I mean, honestly, I, I had Caleb Williams as my number one player in this draft, but, you know, I mean, you could say there's a lot of pressure on him. Do I think he's going to be the most likely to bust? No, but, you know, certainly – living up to expectations, you know, giving up Justin Fields, sort of stunting the momentum of what you built previously and saying, we don't think the ceiling is high enough. This is the guy we want. It looks great on paper, but no guarantee. I think all of them have some level of bust quotient to them. I mean, you could say the same with Jaden too. I mean, 
kind of a one-year wonder. I mean, again, this is a player that I watched in 2019 at Arizona State and thought, well, he's interesting. You know, skinny as heck, but really interesting. So it's not like he's come completely out of nowhere. I don't want to make it seem like that. So obviously the worst the quarterback situation or the, the, the situation around the quarterback is what I meant to say. Um, the less chance they have of succeeding. And right now I think you'd say – Probably New England, Washington. These are a little bit scary situations to throw a young guy into. Hmm. That's why I think Drake May probably has the the highest chance to bust of this top group, and, and maybe Bo Nix would be there too, just because of what the Denver Broncos have right now. But uh, if the Patriots try to force May into the lineup early with, mm-hmm. you know, Pop Douglas is the leading receiver, or, you know what I mean? I mean, just with a. a somewhat shaky offensive line i'm not convinced they have a a total group there yet you know that that's the kind of thing that can can really hurt these guys so obviously with Penix, it's really hard to say when he'll get in the lineup or when the development process begins so i know that wasn't really a firm answer there but the point is yeah you could see trap doors with all these guys 100 percent um Getting back to May, and obviously, you know, when you get drafted third overall, you're expecting that kid to be your starter in week one. But they do have sure. Jacoby Brissett. And so I understand that, you know, maybe you sit him for a while. I don't think he should sit for a full year like Jordan Love did um, because Jordan Love was behind a, you know, a Hall of Famer. So that's a little different situation. Right. But I don't think you get better just completely sitting out. Right, I think or maybe he sits out for a month, you know, four weeks, six weeks, whatever. But I think he's yeah. got to play in year one, don't you? Yeah, no, I mean that's that's the catch twenty two there. It's like you know, you you could argue that uh, you know Carson Palmer benefited from sitting a whole year out as the number one pick a million years ago, right? And then I'm just trying to think of examples like that where you know it, it wasn't a love. Aaron Rodgers type of situation um, mm-hmm. I, I don't think they're going to wait that long it, like you said it's not like Jacoby Brissett is some world beater he is the sort of prototypical bridge quarterback good enough to, to get you through a portion of a season not the guy you want starting 17 games so I'm with you on that the question is I think the Patriots just have to figure out what they have right now and, and decide how stable is this offense you know uh, how much does how good are our receivers? How good is our offensive line? How well can we pass for tech? Because there were times when, when May got himself in trouble. And, and you know, and Jaden, too. I mean, all these guys. I think even Caleb, you could say, you know, tried to make too many things happen behind a bad offensive line last year. And look at the results. It really wasn't that great. He's not any less of a talent than he was the year before. So, mm-hmm. but, yeah, back to May. I mean, I think that's what – what scares me most is even though I had him rated higher than Daniels, the situation he's in is very precarious right now. And a first year head coach and, you know, at least Dan's done it before. And at least the the commanders have some weapons and some guys who are a little bit established in some regards. So I feel like their situation in Denver's is, you know, just a little stronger than what new England has right now, at least in terms of what we know. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, we talked earlier. I, I think you have uh, the Commanders ranked 29th, right? And their sort of preseason rankings or wherever they are yeah. right now at this point. Uh, Pete Prisco, I think I'm as at 31. And I get it. They won four games last year. They're going to be starting a rookie, et cetera. But, you know, here's when the homer in me comes out, Eric. Like, we were so bad last year. And sure. I think we were one of the worst coach teams ever. I think the combination of Ron and him just like turning over everything to Bienemy, who I, I personally don't think he had any idea what he was doing. Um, that was a that was a catastrophe. Um, yeah. And you know, winning like losing eight straight away, that's kind of what happens around here. About every four or five years, when we have a new regime, the bottom falls out. Like I don't right. think we're that bad. Like especially with better coaching. And if Daniels is decent. And like you say, you think he might be more plug-and-play ready right now. I think we could get, like, Orlovsky said, yeah, Daniels could get them, I think, like, maybe get them to seven wins. That's only three games better. I, I feel like our ceiling should be a little higher, maybe eight or nine. Maybe a, just, you know, pick a nits here. It's only one or two spots. But, like, wh- what is the true ceiling for this team next year? 
I, I think it's got to be better than 29 or 31 overall. Yeah, that's where they are right now. That's what I always tell people. Like, look, you know what? The, the way they have, that I have the teams ranked in the power rankings now, you know, that'll all change. Mm-hmm. I mean, based on other teams losing good players, based on rookies being more game ready than we expected, based on mm-hmm. unexpected free agent additions. I mean, you know, new coaches in different situations. We haven't seen these guys at work yet, so. There's always like a, you know, kind of a, a, a shell game going on here. Where it's like, you know, we, I, I understand that we don't have all the information here, so I'm, I'm presenting you kind of a, as we know it scenario. But yeah, I, I, I can see the case for for a seven and ten season. Absolutely. I mean, I, I'm a big Dan Quinn fan. I, I think he's a good coach. Mm-hmm. He got kind of a raw deal in Atlanta. You know, felt like for the most part did a really nice job with that Dallas defense. If you want to argue the playoff game with me? I'll I'll give you that one. But um, you know, the big picture, he turned that group around. Players loved him. You know, culture is going to be a big thing in that in that building. They're going to really emphasize that. It could not have been a great place to work last year, right? Oh, it was <laughs> like, a nightmare. Yeah. It was a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you know, you, you hang your head. You know what's going on from. You know, from the ownership change on down, it was every aspect of the organization had some kind of poison running through it, right? So now they're 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 cleaning it out a little bit. They're they're getting right. this refresh underway. And again, I like the free agency moves. I thought smart, smart, good. I like that. You know, everything seemed purposeful, and that that was refreshing as well. These weren't flashy big name signings. Even the draft picks, it wasn't like they were going for the glitzy big names. No, they were kind of going for the glue guys. And the, and where the are we smart... worse? Eric, where are we worse? Maybe, I mean, uh, I don't know. I guess maybe quarterback because it's unknown. I don't think anywhere. But, but where are we worse than last year? Receiver, maybe? Without Samuel? Okay. Mm. Okay, maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe Did... tight end hasn't quite, well, I guess it was in it. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Like, you know, offensive line, I would say, is still a work in progress. But you're right. I don't know that it's net worse than what you had last year. So that's the hope. I think linebacker's you, you, better. Running back's better. Sure. I think defensive line as a whole is better. I hope it's better. Corners, the secondary ago, should be better. From the end of the season. Well, sure, just because just right. Chase was a zero. I mean, Chase was just, right. you know, he was just, you, you couldn't count on him to do anything. So I just think as a whole, as a, as a whole unit, I think they're better. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. and look, I mean, and if Johnny Newton hits and, and, yeah. and you decide that Allen is available suddenly, that's more draft pick capital for next year. You can just see how this thing builds. And so, I mean, uh-huh. there's a there's an excitement now. I, I think All you right. guys have a legitimate reason to look forward to something next year. Hey, Eric, were you surprised that the Giants passed on Penix and passed on J.J.? Um, at six? Took neighbors. Now, they got two legit receivers now, young guys, high, sure. high at neighbors, but you know, I'm not a Daniel Jones guy. Um, you know, didn't they want May? Wasn't it reported that they try to trade up yeah. to yeah. May? Yeah, and it was so, a pretty big haul. I'm surprised the Patriots said no. But they decided we're not taking JJ. We're not taking Penix. We're going to go with Jones again. Yeah, that was the interesting part of it. The, the Penix part, they brought him in. Um, I, from what I heard, a couple weeks out was like May's their guy, but but they'd be willing to take McCarthy. Now that didn't obviously play out. So. Um, whether they weren't quite as high on him or not, I don't know the answer to that. But clearly they believed May was worth something special. They and the Vikings both tried to get up. Other teams tried to get Penix. The only team that really seemed kind of really in on McCarthy were the Vikings. So I think Drew Locke, who's going to get a lot of offseason reps, has a sneaky chance of beating out Jones this year, and then they'll kind of play it by ear for next year. Yeah. Yeah, we've been hearing those and, rumblings too. That 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 Locke is, is kind of in the hunt for that starting spot. Wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't stun me. I mean, he kind of slipped when he signed and and made it sound like he was going to get to compete for the job, and mm. then they kind of walked it back. And but I really think they're going to try to. I think they had one guy in their in their crosshairs, couldn't get him, and said, so, "All right." Let's let's get the playmaker, and then we'll, we'll worry about it next year. By yeah. the way, where were yeah. you on uh, neighbors versus Marvin Harrison Jr.? Did you really a lot of, close? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I had him back to back. I had I still had Harrison above him, but I mean Harrison's so detailed in his in his, his work. He's kind of got that you know C.D. Lamb, Justin Jefferson vibe about him, and I think he's going to be really special. But 
I wouldn't be stunned if, you know, Neighbors is as effective as, you know, a Stefan Diggs or that kind of player. I think he's going to be terrific. So, they're, it's, you know, comparing apples to kumquats, they're just different, you know. <laughs> Real quick, before we let you go, kind of stay in the division, the Eagles, obviously in the offseason, picked up Barkley. All right, so their offense got better. Now we'll, we'll see what happens with Hurts. If Hurts is, you know, relatively injury-free, I think he's going to have a really good year. They've got yeah. legit... They've got legit receivers, and then they went out and drafted their top two picks were were DBs, were were corners. Maybe the yeah. you know, two are the top three um, in the draft. I don't know where you had uh, Mitchell and 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 DeGene ranked, but just talk yeah. about. They're probably both going to start, I would assume. So just talk about that. Yeah, Mitchell's going to start on the outside, I would think. Right, he's got a great opportunity to take that job that that Bradbury had last year, and then. Mm-hmm. Nickel job was open as soon as Devontae Maddox got hurt last year. So, you know, they tried everybody, every combination they could find, and nothing worked. So I I would imagine Cooper DeGene is kind of going to be like their Brian Branch, like what the Lions had last year as kind of a hybrid nickel safety type. I don't think you want Cooper DeGene starting on the outside. Can he play out there? Yeah. But coming off the injury, I think what his skill set suggests is that he's probably best in that nickel or box safety role and i think both of them were were terrific picks you know staying patient with the first trading up for the second typical howie roseman you know he plays the board i think as well as anybody so uh you know hat tip to them they're always a fun team to watch on draft weekend and um yeah i mean they they took johnny wilson late and they had a couple other interesting picks and kind of like what they did I, I thought they had a really nice strap but those top two picks are what made it i think mm-hmm. all right eric appreciate the time as always appreciate the insight have a good one you too bye yep all right thanks, thank eric. you buddy